It's time to practice finding the four key facts about a subnet. I'll give you three questions, pause the video and answer them, and then I'll show you how to find the answers. For context, this topic matches Volume 1, Part 4, Chapter 14. It's one of the most important topics in CCNA. For reference, here's a repeat of the nine possible values you'll find in a dotted decimal mask in their binary equivalent. When the decimal value is a 0 or 255, that octet's really easy to work with for some subnetting processes, like the one we're talking about here. But these other seven values ends up making the octet a little more difficult to work with, and that's where you end up spending most of your time. So that's why we need to practice. So I'm going to put the three questions right up here. Once you see each one, hit pause in the video. You can even time yourself if you're to the point of wanting to know how fast you're going. So once I reveal those, I want you to figure out the subnet ID and subnet broadcast address, which is the harder part. And then once you know those, find the first and last usable, usable addresses in the subnet. Ready? Here we go. There are the three questions. I'll give you five seconds to pause, go off, and answer the questions. Of course, let's start with question one. Here are the answers. All the answers begin with 192.168.9. Of course, we're subnetting a class C network, so all those octets are the same. Subnet ID ends in .76. First address 77, last address 78, and the subnet broadcast address is 79. How did we figure that out? Let's walk through it if you're interested. Otherwise, you can skip ahead about a minute and a half, two minutes. First up, the question, we always write it this way. We put the dotted decimal mask first, then the address, column aligned, and that's what this text up here means, refers us to what my written process is to get there. And we leave, leave space for the subnet, a, subnet ID first, last, and subnet broadcast address written below. So that's our workspace. Then if the mask is 255, we work by octet. So in this case, we've got three octets of 255. So in those octet, we copy the address octets to both the subnet ID and to the subnet broadcast address. So this, these three octets match the subnet ID, and subnet broadcast address. Then we've just got one octet, the fourth octet, left to work with. So at step three, it says if the mask is zero, well, the mask isn't zero. So that's a big do nothing at step three. It's there in case the mask has a value of zero in one or more octets. Then at step four, if the mask is neither a zero nor a 255, well, that is the case here. We're going to do these three sub-steps A, B, and C. So the next three slides will be the detail of A, B, and C, and it starts with that magic number calculation. So how does that go? Well, that's 256 minus 252. Why 256? We always start with 256 for this calculation, and we pick the mask's value in that interesting octet, 252 in this case, which of course gives us four. What does that mean? The magic number, it's a multiple of that that's the subnet ID's value. So we just have to figure out which multiple, and that's what we do at step B. So writing down all the multiples of four, starting with zero, you always start with zero because the subnet ID might have a zero in that octet. So zero, four, eight, 16, you know, or 12, 16, 20, 24, so on. And I've skipped a bunch and got to 68, 72, 76, and 80. And we've highlighted 76 because we want the multiple of four closest to the address without going over. So that's what the step B text is supposed to mean. So 76 is the closest multiple to 78 without going over 78. So 76 is the value of the subnet ID in that case. So that part's done. Then, then to find the subnet broadcast address, we take the next multiple of four and subtract one. So next multiple is 80 minus one dot 79 here. Now, once you have the subnet ID and subnet broadcast address, finding the first and last address is easy. You add one in the fourth octet of the subnet ID. You subtract one in the fourth octet of the subnet broadcast address. The first three octets stay the same in this bit. And you found all the right answers. Here are the answers for question two. In this case, the address was 172.16.122.33. Here's our subnet ID 
and the rest of the values. You can take a moment and check that. If you're happy with it, you can skip around to the next section and check your answer there. But if you'd like to see how I found the answers, just keep rolling. All right, so here's the process. We write the dotted decimal mask, followed by the address, column aligned to make our workspace easy to work with. Then for any octets for which the mask is 255, we copy to the numbers below. There's two octets where the mask is 255, so we copy 17216 below here. Then at step three, this time there is a mask octet with a value of zero, the fourth octet. So in that case, we write a zero, we don't copy, we write a zero for the subnetity value and we write a 255 for the broadcast address value. Now we finished three of the octets, but of course the third octet is yet to be filled in because its mask value is 248, it's neither a zero nor a 255. So at the next step, it says, hey, if that's the case, not a zero, not a 255, we've got these three sub-steps. Let's walk through those one after the other. So at step A, we calculate the magic number. It's always 256 minus the mask's value in this interesting octet. So 256 minus 248 gives us 8, which tells us this number in the subnetity is going to be a multiple of 8. Which multiple? Well, we want to get close to 122 without going over. So if I look at a list of multiples of 8 starting at 0, 0, 8, 16, blah, 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 112, 120, 128. So comparing that list, 120 is closest to 122 without going over. So we pick 120, and there's your subnet ID. So just do repetition, keep working on them, you'll get there. To find the subnet broadcast address, it's the next multiple, this 128. So now it's highlighted in the next slide, and it's 128 minus 1, or 127. So it's not the next multiple, it's the next multiple minus 1, or 127 in that octet. So now you've got the subnet broadcast address. Then finding the first and last address is simple. First address, it's the same as the subnet ID, but we add one to the fourth octet, not, not to the interesting octet, to the fourth octet. And to find the last usable address, it's one less than the subnet broadcast address by subtracting one again from the fourth octet, always the fourth octet. And those are your four values. Here are the answers for question three. 10.207.55.88 was the address, and we see the answers down here. I'll give you a moment. You can hit pause and check these. But if you want to hear how, just keep rolling, and I'll talk about it next. All right, let's go. Usual setup, dotted decimal mask, followed by the address, column aligned. So simple step one. Then for the octets for which the mask is 255, that's only octet 1 in this case, we copy the address's value of 10 down below. In this case, we've got two octets where the mask value is 0. So in two octets, we write zeros in the subnet ID and 255s in the subnet broadcast address for the third and fourth octet, leaving only one octet left to figure out. So then we get to step four, which is where we deal with that interesting octet where the mask is neither a zero nor a 255. In this case, it's 248 again. So what do we do then? Calculate the magic number, look at the multiples of the magic number, and find the one that's closest to 207 without going over. Let's take a look. So there's our calculation of the magic number. Same as the previous example, by the way. Then 0, 8, 16, 24, and I didn't show those. I even just said, hey, I'm going to count by 64s for a moment. 0, 64, 128, 192. Why can't I get away with counting by 64s? Well, it turns out um, 64 is also a multiple of 8, and 128 is also a multiple of 8. So th this is a way to kind of speed up if you're counting all the way up to like into the high 100s and 200s. Just count by 64s until you get close, and then you can start counting by the magic number. So we get to 192, we add 8 more, you get 200. Add 8 more, you get 208. Well, 208 is over 207. It's greater than, so that's not good. We want the one that's closest without going over. So that's, of course, 200. So 10.200.0.0 .0 .0 is your subnet ID. And then we take the next multiple, 208, 
for the subnet broadcast address minus 1 to get 207. So the next multiple minus 1. Armed with those numbers, then it's just a matter of adding 1 to the subnet ID's fourth octet and subtracting 1 from the broadcast address's fourth octet to find the usable address range. Hope you enjoyed the practice. Check out the description to this video for some links to hints about finding more and more practice. It's a great thing to practice. You should get great at subnetting math. Hey, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell to get notified of new videos and give me a like if you enjoyed the process. See you later.